In this video, we'll add some photos to our project. So I'll start by going to the Photos event, and then I'll click on Photo 1 to select it, and then I'll Command click on Photo 2 to select it as well, and then I'll Command click on Photo 3. So I have all three of those photos in the selection. Now I'll just click and drag to bring them down into my project, and I'm gonna use this drag and drop method of doing an insert edit right after that swing slow motion clip. So now I have all three photos in the project, and what I'll do is I'll click out here to deselect them, and then I'm just gonna click on photo one here to select it. And if you look up here next to the name of the project, you can see a number, and that number tells me the duration of my selection. So in this case, I have this photo selected. It tells me that it's four seconds and one frame long. And this is a fast way to see the duration of something in your project. For example, if I click on this, it tells me it's six seconds, 19 frames. If I click here, it tells me it's 9 seconds, 28 frames. And this number here tells you the duration of the whole project. So right now it's 1 minute, 13 seconds, and 4 frames long. Anyway, I'm going to go back and click on photo 01. The reason I bring up the duration is because by default, when you add a new photo to a video project in Final Cut Pro, the duration is going to be 4 seconds. But you can change that in the preferences. I'll go up to Final Cut Pro, and then Preferences, and then under the Editing Preferences where it says Still Images, Editing duration is four seconds, but I could change this to five seconds or something else. I'll leave it at four for now. That's fine. And then I'll click here to close the preferences. Now already in our project, our music is marked with these markers on the beats. So it's very easy for me to edit on the beat. I can just drag this edit point. I'll just click here to trim this and I'm going to drag the edit point right to that marker and it snaps to the marker. And then I'll do the same thing here. And then I'll do the same thing here. And now all three of those are right on the beat. Let's take a look. I'll just play this back. A significant part of her personal style. And I'll stop the playback. The next thing I want to show you is how the photo fits into the project. The photo is actually higher resolution than our project. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to select this photo 01, and then I'm going to open up the inspector. I'll click here to open the inspector and under the info inspector you can see the resolution of the photo is 3456 by 2298 and that's a big deal because it's a lot more pixels than the project itself which is 1280 by 720 so there's more pixels in the photo and yet you can see that the photo fits nicely in the frame and the reason for that is because of setting here so I'm going to go to the video inspector and then down here where it says spatial conform you could click show if you're not seeing a setting here but you just click show and then it says type and then you can see by default it's set to fit but i can change this right now it's fitting the photo in the project's frame but i could change it to fill and then it'll fill the frame that's a good option or i could switch it to none and now it's not doing any kind of spatial conform it's just showing me the image as it is now if i want i could scale this down i can come up here to transform click on the word show here, and then adjust the scale parameter. For example, I can just click and drag this to the left to scale it down. So I could do something like that or scale it up. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is reset the transform parameters. I'll click here on the reset button, and then I'll hide the transform parameters. I'm gonna switch the spatial conform type back to fit because that's how I want it for this project. And then I'm gonna hide this. Okay, and I'm gonna click to close the inspector. The next thing I want to do is adjust the level of music so as the music heads into the photos and it just displays the photos, there's no voiceover anymore so we can raise the level of the music up a little bit. Let's try that. What I'll do is I'll create a keyframe. I'm going to option click on the volume slider right here. So I'll just option click and that creates a keyframe. And then if I go to the right here a little bit, I can click here, option click here to create another keyframe. And then I can raise that level up. Right now it's at negative 12, but let me increase that. I'll just click and drag to bring up the level here. Five is probably too much, but let's try negative three. Let's see what that's like, or negative four. And then what I'll do is I'll come over here towards the end of the photos, and I'm gonna option click here to create another keyframe. And then I'm gonna option click over here to create another one, and then I'll bring the level back down again. So we can bring it down to, what was it, negative 12? Is that what it was? Yeah, negative 12. Okay, so now what I should have is an increase in level here, and then it stays a little bit higher until it gets to the end of this photo, and then it starts to decrease again. So option clicking on the volume controls is how you create those keyframes. And then to delete a keyframe, you can just control click or right click and delete it. I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that deletion. Let's take a listen and see what this sounds like. I'll play through it. Personal style. Hyman. 
So you could hear the volume of the music go up and then it stayed up for a little while and then it went back down again. One thing that's really helpful when you're doing this is to increase the height of the waveform. So I'm gonna come up here and I'll increase the clip height by dragging on the slider and then I'll close this down again. I'm gonna scroll down and you can see the difference in the levels a lot more easily now. If you wanna adjust the timing of things, you can just click and drag this like this. If I wanna have the volume start to increase a little bit earlier and then I want it to have already increased a little bit earlier, maybe something like that, I could adjust it like this to kind of make it more gradual. Let's take a listen. And part of her personal style. and I'll stop the playback. So that's one way you can do it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna control click to delete this keyframe. In fact, I'll just do it for all of them. And then I'll select it, delete it, control click or right click and delete the keyframe. I wanna show you another alternative, something that's a little bit faster when it comes to creating keyframes like this, when you wanna just increase the volume over a range or lower it. And that is to use the range tool. So I'm gonna click up here to change over to my range selection tool. And then here are the three photos right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start where this marker is. I'm just gonna click and drag to create a range that lasts the duration of all three of those photos. And then I'm going to hover over the volume control. I'm gonna click and drag on it up like this. I'll just go to negative four, that's fine. And then if I switch back to my regular selection tool, like this, and then click away somewhere, you can see, sure enough, all four of those keyframes just got added automatically. Now, my experience with this is that it tends to be a little abrupt, so you might need to make more adjustments to kind of smooth it out. Like maybe I have to drag this to the left here a little bit, drag this one to the right here a little bit, so it's kind of smoothed out. Let's take a listen. Personal style. And I'll stop playback and then I'll shrink the size of the clips back down so I'll click here and let's use the slider to shrink it back down make it a little easier to see everything at the same time and then in the next video we're gonna take a look at one of my favorite tools in Final Cut Pro and that is the trim tool